Hello and welcome to another one of the Michigan Military Technical and Historical Society Museum uh, COVID-19 Museum shutdown videos. Uh, so today I want to talk a little bit about this exhibit where we talk uh, about the development of this insignia and what it meant. Uh, so as uh, war becomes more technological, it becomes necessary for the militaries to have people closer to the front uh, as a, you know, technological advisors and things of that nature. And so how do you do that? How do you get those people up there? Uh, how do you avoid the Geneva Convention issue of people in civilian uniforms uh, possibly being treated as spies? You know, one solution to this problem is, of course, to just commission them into the military. And the United States and, and Great Britain and other countries did this to some extent uh, with some levels of success in both World War I and World War II. But I was reading a, an account recently of the, the development of the tank in World War I, and there was an interesting side note in, that, in this particular book that stated basically that the British ran into a problem of uh, these technology experts, uh, and the tank in particular, you know, how, if you commission them into the military, what rank do you assign them? And it became kind of a, kind of a sticking point for them. Uh, if you make them too low of a rank, let, you know, say that you make this person a lieutenant, and they're trying to advise a general on how to you know, best use technology, uh, the, the, the probability is that the general is going to dismiss this lieutenant and you know, order him to go away. And if you assign them too high of a rank, then it, it makes you know, people who have earned that rank a bit testy. So uh, what the United States did in World War II is they come up with this particular insignia here. Uh, so AR-600-35 uh, came out in March of 1944 and created this insignia, a uh, four and a half inch triangle, either dark blue or black, with a or four and a half inch square, either dark blue or black, with a white triangle. Uh, and that would be worn on the uniform to indicate the, uh, the person was a civilian uh, advisor of some variety. Uh, interestingly, there was a, a version of this it called out in the AR that instead of having a white triangle, had a had a scarlet triangle, which was supposedly to indicate the person was an armed non-combatant. Uh, I have never seen one of these in real life, and nor have I ever s spoke to anyone who has seen one. I'd be curious to hear if they were ever made. Uh, but it was called out in the AR. Uh, AR 600-40 was... Uh, came out in November of 1944, which altered this patch to create these insignia. Now, the patch was made slightly smaller, and it had a provision on it for to say what your specialty was. Uh, the original 19, November 1944 uh, had war correspondent, chauffeur, photographer, messenger, radio commentator, technical observer, scientific consultant, operations analyst, AAF technical advisor, and automotive advisor. Uh, I believe we have all of them here. Uh, down here on the bottom, you also had a number of ribbons that were authorized for wear by, by civilians. Uh, these first three are, are, are length of service awards uh, that showed uh, the basic one is five year. Uh, the one with the white stripe here is a 10-year, and there was also a 25-year ribbon, which we don't have an example of. I've never actually seen one. And then these three ribbons were corresponded with the with your your theater campaign ribbons for Europe, uh, Asia, and uh, national defense. Yeah, same basic colors. So those were actually issued for uh, for service. You know, it would denote where you served at. Yeah. Here you can have an example of the of the uniform here, uh, this particular one, which is you see these somewhat in post-war uh, in Europe in particular, and uh, you see these in some of the films. These American GIs would would leave the service. This particular gentleman has the uh, the uh, ruptured duck. He was honorably discharged. Has his good conduct ribbon, his World War II victory medal, and a European theater ribbon with four battle stars. And then he also has the civilian patch, and then these nice collar insignia, epaulet insignias. 
that are kind of neat. Uh, this uniform up here is another version. This one just has the uh, the collar insignia on it; does not have the sleeve insignia. So you know there were some variation, you know, t very typical of some of these things where you find theater-made versions and things of that nature. Like down here, this this AAF technical advisor patch that we have is a theater-made version, and then you have the two you know variation down at the bottom, you know, a little bit more elaborate. Uh, you have the standard war correspondence patch up there. Uh, Red Cross had had insignia they used as well, and then. Uh, you know, we continue using this post-war. There's some 50s, 60s examples. Uh, not really sure, but the Air Force one's obviously post-1947. Uh, you have the green subdued, the desert, and then the ACU Velcro-backed version. Uh, I, have never, I have not yet seen a Coyote Brown version for the, mod, the current uniform. I'm not sure if it's out there or not, but if there is, I'll get one for the collection eventually. Uh, so kind of leading into that, you know, this, these insignia is still out there today. Uh, we still have civilians in uniform uh, out at the front every day. Uh, this particular uniform here was worn by, uh, by my father, Robert Cosley, uh, in Somalia in 1994 when he was a TACOM civilian sent over to Mogadishu in support of the UN operations. And there he is in the back of the truck in Somalia with a Pakistani UN uh, soldier. Uh, and then this uniform here is the one that I wore in uh, Kuwait in 2004 as part of the TACOM Integrated Readiness Management Team. So uh, you can see that, you know, we still, I still have the sleeve insignia, same basic sleeve insignia that was created in uh, November of 1944. Uh, they've added a lot more uh, this is the logistics specialist patch. They've added a bunch more. Uh, they've also added uh, a lot more ribbons uh, for civilians. And down here, and uh, yeah, so currently uh, AR-670-1 uh, is what currently calls out what you're allowed to wear. Uh, So that is our brief and uh, completely unprofessional video look at this exhibit. And uh, hopefully it will pique your interest and you can come in and take a look at it, see it in person, uh, read all the information panels. And uh, we'll see you uh, when this is over and we reopen. Thank you very much. Stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll see you soon.